Hello everyone, I am Kalia Vlidyaki and I will be your design journey art class expert for drawing with watercolors and inks while creating paintings and illustrations inspired by nature and all the beauty around us. I am a self taught artist from Greece and also an architecture student who will probably soon make my mom proud and graduate. And yeah, I have always been a creative person. Since high school, I used to make so many realistic graphite pencil portraits and it was my favorite style, but this gave me the perfect base to then explore more techniques and more materials that now mainly are digital art, watercolors and inks. Finding your identity and style as an artist can be an ongoing struggle that seems to never end. At least for me it has been one of the biggest ones and yeah, your mind can get quite lost in the idea that what you're creating is not yours and it is just an influence of everything you're seeing in social media and other artists do. But quickly and I mean, at least finally, I realized that this is not true. It is so, so awesome and amazing to be able to see what other artists do, learn from their techniques and then just keep all the elements that you really enjoyed and add them to your library of why you love art and slowly, piece by piece, you will create your own artistic self. I have always been in love with fashion, tattoos, digital art and illustrations while also cherishing traditional mediums like watercolors using earthy tones, muted colors and textures. Two years ago I created my YouTube channel named Kalia Vlivyaki where I share with you watercolor tutorials, paintings, everything about bullet journaling and also behind the scenes of being a freelance artist and yeah, generally anything that lets my creativity sparkles just shine. <laughs> So I am super excited to have you here with me in the design journey where throughout all our sessions we will learn together how with simple techniques and the right materials you can create amazing pieces of art no matter your previous art experience or art level. From just tapping your fine liners into amazing black and white illustrations to creating magical watercolor sceneries. We will start by learning all the basics of using black ink with the Stadler pigment liners and of course how to properly prepare our guidelines for success while slowly building up the level of difficulty. Learning fun ways to mix media like watercolors and colored pencils and the importance of texture. And even touch on materials like the Stadler watercolor pens that can be so unique and versatile and especially in tattoos. And of course, creating magical watercolor sceneries like a misty winter forest. So yeah, there are no more words left to say, but just to get started. For our first session, I will walk you through on how to achieve shading values using dots or else the stippling method using the Stadler pigment liners. The materials we're going to use are the pigment liners from the Stadler Design Journey assortment that you can find in this set of three, including two metallic markers that we're going to use in the following session number two. Or you can find the pigment liners individually numbered according to their nib width. So we have number 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and the bigger brass type that can go from 0 0.3 to 2. Of course, to follow up all the exercises and plan our sketches, we're going to use a pencil, an eraser and sharpener in case we need them. Everything included in this set. And the geometry ruler to help create straight and symmetrical guidelines. And the paper I'm gonna use is an A5 size and 220 GSM. Starting right away, we need to understand how dot shading works. Creating shadows with only tapping the tip of our pigment liner is about understanding the density and space between each dot. The closer the dots are, the darker the result is, creating depth and light values. As you can see here, I created four different boxes to have a better understanding about dot density. And what result we get as we look each box. I started out by filling the first box with the more dots I could in order to have a dark result. And 
and then as I move forward to the other boxes I slightly start to have less and less dots so more space between them. Starting from the box with the smallest amount of dots, we can see that the white space around them is more visible giving us a lighter result. While as we start to do more and more dots and covering more space of the box, the black part our eyes see grows in space so we have a darker result. The biggest challenge in dot shading is being consistent. All your dots need to have an even amount of space and size. Same size can easily be achieved by lightly tapping the pigment liner on the paper. You don't have to push too hard or for too long since then your dots will have a different look each time. And the standard pigment liners are perfect for this because of their hard and sturdy nib and their consistent ink flow. That is also waterproof and makes smudging even harder. And as you can see from these three tests here, not be consistent can lead in giving the wrong impression of your shadows. But the dot shading technique or as stippling is mostly used in gradients, so we combine all the above in one space, going from darker to lighter or in reverse. A value scale. You don't have to rush this, you start light and then slowly build up the darker parts. I know it needs a lot of patience, but the result is quite impressive. So if we have a form like this, a sphere, we want to decide our light source. If we say it's on the right top corner, then this part of the sphere will be the lighter. And somewhere right here will be the darker. So on the top sphere you see me how I would normally shade it with pencil and graphite which is quite simple and quick, but this will help us understand the shading and shadows we need to place with our dots even more. So now that we're done with our graphite shading, we have to actually try and do the same with the pigment liners and the dots. Wherever we see dark shadows this means we have to add more dots. While for the lighter part we need to do the opposite. I think by now it is quite self-explanatory when you see these two spheres side by side. And now that you have learned everything you need to know about dot shading, you are ready to start your first design journey challenge. And it is a full drawing from start to finish, but trust me, following the next steps will get you there and the result is so, so good. Starting off with my symmetry ruler, I mark the center of the page and create a center straight line by connecting two points. Then at around one third of this line, I mark a point to start placing my grid that will help me create a symmetrical butterfly or moth. First counting one centimeter from our baseline, then another two and a half means we're going to three and a half centimeters and one more going to four and a half. Then another two centimeters on the bottom and two on the top. And now we can draw all the lines passing through our points. This will be our horizontal lines. Now for our vertical ones, again placing our ruler in the center, making a mark 6 cm on each side, then 3 on each side. And now our symmetry grid for the wings and the body is ready. I know it may sound confusing, but I hope by seeing the picture and the actual grid, it is a lot easier to understand. For our butterfly head, just do a little circle on the center of the first skinny 1 cm space and then two curved lines connecting lower to the side corners of each side. And then two more on the higher lane, passing, ending on the second big boxes on both sides. Always try to remember to mirror everything. Then in order to close the bottom part of the wings, we do curved lines and wavy details as you could see on butterflies. 
continuing by adding more details as you please. Now that the toughest part is done and you have your symmetrical sketch, it's time to grab your pigment liners and trace all the pencil parts and create a clean outline. Erase the sketch underneath and now you're ready to start dotting. Be patient and start covering your paper. I started from the head and body since I knew I wanted them to be really dark. And then moving to the wings, keeping the middle body part as the darker start for all my wing gradients that are slowly getting lighter till they're really dark almost completely cover and at the pointy tips of each wing. And as you can see, our illustration is starting to look like a really beautiful butterfly or even a dark mystic moth. Doing exactly the same on both sides. To finish off my illustration, I decided to add some small background details and gradient to enhance the geometric clean style of this moth. And here it is, I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and oh boy I am so so excited to see your creations so make sure to share them with me on Instagram using the hashtag mydesignjourney. Thank you so much for being here and following this design journey that it is truly all about finding inspiration in nature and everything around us. When you think about it, nothing stops you from going out there and finding it. <laughs>